Um, okay, I call this meeting of the Excellence in Student Achievement Committee to order. First order of business is uh, to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. You don't have to have a roll call, no? Thank you. Okay, so let's the chair. I know me. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm willing to do, I'm willing to serve, so <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. You guys don't want to spend hours and hours reviewing our meetings and reading this. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Okay. The moment we have been looking forward to a review of the of the report from the high school diploma scheduled committee. So we're all we're all set. I believe we are. Okay. Well, um, Matt Muller, assistant principal at high school, and um, back in. January, we uh, formed, formed this committee, and um, um, again, I have a PowerPoint here that uh, I'll just refer to on my own and share it with the committee members, but I will say that initially, uh, I was a little bit anxious because it was 16 people um, meeting via Zoom and discussing some pretty important topics um, that are, you know, on, on your slides, but essentially we were looking to review and recommend changes to the high school graduation requirements uh, based on that changing you know recommending a bell schedule for 2022-23 um, some of the some, some things we wanted to ensure that were, were met were increasing instructional time in ela and mathematics um, and also um, trying to reduce teacher preps Third item that we were tasked with addressing was recommending changes to program studies and diploma with distinction. So it was quite a lot. If I close the door, right? Thank you. Thank you. Needless to say, we had a lot to do, and I was a little, you know, I've obviously been on many committees in the past. Sometimes they function well, sometimes, you know, people don't always cooperate or they like to uh, you know throw a wrench in the gears so this committee was fantastic though um, very I, I thought it was overall for 16 people meeting via zoom breaking out the subcommittees which I'll discuss in a minute um, very productive people were comfortable questioning challenging things um, and I think at the end we got just pretty much consensus on the recommendations and recommendations that will benefit our students. So overall, I was really happy with um, the outcome. Uh, just so people know, and you, you folks all know, but uh, the committee was made up of teachers, staff members, parents, um, building and district administration, and uh, two school board members. So we had good representation of the community. Uh, just wanted to make sure that was, that was uh, out there. And uh, just kind of last, last little bit, bits of uh, information. Um, we had intended on meeting monthly, uh, once a month, January through June. However, we realized in March that we were not going to accomplish our tasks, so we added a couple meetings. So we had two meetings in April and two meetings in May. Um, and uh, that's enabled us to get to this point. Um, I mentioned subcommittees earlier and in our first meeting in January, we recognized we wanted to focus on three areas, um, students going into careers with the workforce, um, students going off to post-secondary uh, or you know, college or vocational studies. And then uh, we wanted a group to look at, we wanted to look at what other schools are doing around us. So uh, we, we, we essentially identified those as three separate subcommittees and um, the members of the, committee self-selected. We broke off into those three areas uh, and um, the recommendations that are forthcoming, you know, came from different subcommittees, but were discussed as a whole. Any questions before I move on? I don't know. Okay, sorry. Um, 
but I will elaborate on some of the work of the subcommittees as, as we go along. First recommendation um, pertains to the graduation requirements and um, we're recommending a reduction in the total number of um, credits for, for graduation or diploma credits from 28 to 24. Okay. And I included what the credits are on the slideshow. It's really our current, what we currently require, but a fewer number of electives. Currently we require eight electives. Um, and this is a recommendation for 5.5. .5. Um, it's easier to, if you can see it for, to understand it, but essentially there is a one course wiggle room right now. So if a student actually takes, because we're gonna, and I'll get to the bell schedule in a minute, six academic classes a year times four years, that's 24 credits. And we're also recommending um, that advisory becomes a graduation requirement for an additional credit. So, you know, for that student who, act, who earns six credits a year plus advisory, they'll end up with 25 credits at graduation. But we have a 24 credit, 24 credit um, diploma. So, so you call it one one credit wiggle room, if you will. Um, does that make sense? Nope. Okay. You know, currently we have 28. We have an eight period day. Eight times four is 32 credits. We have a 28 credit diploma. So in theory, there's like a four credit, four credit wiggle room uh, today, but uh, we don't think, we don't believe we needed that. Do you want us to ask you questions as we go through yeah. the slides? Or do you want yeah, to I think the end? whatever works for you, whatever's, whatever's easier. I think J Jamie and Dawn were on the committees, so they yeah. kind of know and Patty yeah. knows, and Tammy and I are, I know quite a bit, but Tammy, do you want to just go through the whole thing and then ask questions? How would you like um, to proceed? We have multiple recommendations. So this is number one. Number one. So I guess I'd like to discuss this before we move on to number two. Okay, perfect. So can you, um, so the current day is has eight is eight periods. Uh, yes. What can, what comprises those periods? What's a typical schedule, class schedule? What like the typical student schedule look like? Well, with COVID or pre-COVID. <laughs> Whatever next year or the year <laughs> that this would be implemented. So no COVID, no okay. COVID in that scenario. Yeah. So I haven't lived it yet. I know it's a it's it's a waterfall schedule. So it's a six day rotation. And I don't have a fully committed memory, but it's a six day rotation and classes meet four out of every six days. Right. For 120, for 120 hours a year. And that was that was um, pre COVID. That was mm -hmm. pre COVID. Currently, they're doing 90 days a year right. because we're on an AD model. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, and that is not the scenario here. There would be no rotation or there would still be they rotation. haven't decided that yet so the the recommendation is for the graduation credits and there's some more recommendations in the upcoming slides about how often certain things will meet but the master schedule hasn't been developed yet so mm -hmm. that'll be the work that we have to do as we move forward is that accurate matt yes yeah yeah um and we are recommending um you know at this point the committee looked at you know, for, for the first slide, um, having math and ELA on a daily basis, um, we, we felt as though a six period bell schedule would, would, would allow that to occur. Um, if you try to, for lack of a better term, jam seven or eight periods into a single day, your classes are so short, you're not going to be, it's going to be difficult to engage in any sort of projects, labs, you know, right? so we felt as though um, if, if having math and ELA five days a week was a tight, something that we really want to see happen, that we could go to six period day and the average, depending upon the schedule, we have a couple different schedules we looked at, but none of them are set in stone, class times would be anywhere from 54 to 60 minutes each, which would um, give you, like it's about 150, it would increase the total number of instructional minutes from 120 hours per year, which I believe it was 144 to 160.
64, and I wish I lived there. It was in that, that. It was in that range. Yeah, but I think it's important to note that that's the next step. So the first step is is to begin with the end in mind and and figure out what we want kids to have for experiences and for graduation credits. And then some of the tights were discussed in this committee and need to be continually discussed because we need to know what those are. But over the course of the fall next year, a group of uh, people at the high school will work on ideas for a master schedule that will then come to this committee for approval, right? So the, the development of the master schedule is going to take time. And so we have to, we have to really first know what it is that we're scheduling and then create the schedule, right? So this is a big change to go from, I just wanna say that I, I, to go from 32 credits and 28 credits to 24 credits is a huge change. And, and, and building a schedule for that, it'll be a completely different schedule, it has to be. It's like starting from scratch. With only six periods in the day, and at least one of them has to be lunch, right? No, lunch isn't a period. Lunch wouldn't, it's no. six academic periods. So, okay. So yeah. there would still be, lunch is separate, okay. yeah, we would still have um, a lunch period, and we have a, a shorter period dedicated to advisory or the focused learning time, that FLT time where teachers can meet with students to uh, get an extra help to do competency recovery. You know, that would still be built in to oh. the, the schedule. Okay. And, but, and that would not be part of the six periods. Okay, okay. So what, what I would advise is that we hold off on talking about the master schedule until he's done the rest of this, because there is some stuff in here that will explain. So like the next slide will help with the way that's gonna work. And then maybe at the end, we can talk about next steps with that. Tammy, I think that would help you to see the, the unless you've already read it all, there's some, once he goes through the next few slides, it, it plays into what you're wondering about. I mean, I read what, read what, what I read okay. yesterday. I, I just want, I, my concern would be for my, um, I would want to make sure that the students who want to do certain um, extracurriculars, but they're not necessarily like band and chorus, I want to definitely make sure that those are, um, that they're not going to have to make a lot of, if, I mean, you know, you have to make hard choices, I suppose, but I don't want someone to have, you know, they can't take band because they're not going to have enough credits to graduate. Thank you. I, I, or chorus or art or, you know. Yeah, great. When I met with Matt and, and Patty to go over this, the first thing they'll say, mm -hmm. the first thing I said is you have to schedule band first mm -hmm. because band cuts across all four grades and all the kids. And if you don't schedule it first, it ruins the program. Mm -hmm. And I met with the music teachers today and discussed that with them. And they agreed that, that you have to, it, it, it because it's so cross-cutting, it yeah. will, it, my wife was a music teacher for 18 years, so I have spent a lot of time talking about band schedules. Um, band is a big one that should be scheduled first. And then what I talked to Matt and Patty about is immediately after that comes math and ELA. Because mm -hmm. as you move down the list of constraints with any schedule, the, once you get to the fifth or sixth one, meeting what you want it to do gets harder, right? So we have to make choices and, and um, it would, uh, Honestly, I just don't, I don't want anyone to feel that there's favoritism. It's just, you can't run a band program without having a clear meeting time first. It's really hard. And, you know, in, in the interest of trans, you know, transparency, um, if the only students who might feel pinched would be if a student wanted four years of band and four years of world language, there might, there might be a half credit issue that could be addressed with an ELL. Um, hmm. Because if you um, notice there, even though slide number, it's the fourth slide on your, on your deck there, even though it says 5.5 electives, that's really 6.5 because we have that one, one, one uh, credit wiggle room. Fine arts and forming arts is um, you know, band or choir. Mm -hmm. So it's really 7.5. So it's really, a, we're looking at a half credit. So if, uh, currently they're very, well, I've heard there's been you know changes coming up, you know, with the way things have um, changed in middle school with, with world language. But you know, currently there are no seniors who fall in that category. But um, I've been told that things have changed. Like we don't currently have any Which seniors who are taking. Are about? We don't have any seniors who are currently taking um, band and world language simultaneously. Really? As a fourth year, sorry, as a fourth year world language and a fourth year band. Oh. 
Okay. Um, I find that surprising and I'm a, I would be a little concerned. My understanding is, and I don't think it's changed, is that that is important to colleges, yes. certain colleges that you might try to apply to that they're looking for. Well, we both. We both. Like there are lots of kids with four years of band and four years of language. I don't want kids to, have, to have to choose between well, going, take, having, yeah. being in the band for four years yep. and having four years of language. I really, I'm hoping that that is not going to be a choice that they're going to have to make. Yeah. And ultimately, it, it can be choices on electives. Yes, yeah. but that is yeah. that is yeah. not that is that is not one that I would want to force someone into. Yeah. You know what college? I'm going to get into a college of my choice and have four four years of language, a foreign language, and not be a member of the band or the chorus. Yeah. I assume it's the yeah. same yeah. issue. Yeah. And there it's, are it's I mean, there are creative ways, and there are other creative ways around it. So, like, if that's a, if that's something that we want to address, we, we can certainly. Yeah. And did we also okay. discuss um, the option the option of uh, relapse? Yes. Potentially, if somebody needed to take something that didn't quite fit in the schedule, there is also the option of or ELO, that's like a ELO, ELO, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, like a foreign language ELO, yes, a foreign language ELO or a foreign language, um, college class. course, foreign language. I mean, there are lots of ways to there are alternatives. And, and just to be clear, the number of students that take four years of foreign language and four years of band, Matt, you could ask Heidi for the data, but it's it's not a lot of people. Right, that take both for four years. And as Jamie said, you do have to sometimes make choices. We can't, we cannot make this so that it works for every scenario for everyone, but I hear you and agree that that's a concern because a lot of really bright kids do ban and want to do four years of foreign language. So the question is- It's not even a question of wanting to do four years of language. That's an, that's an admissions, um, not, you know, that's, that's an admissions criteria at a lot of higher level colleges. They're looking for a student to have four years of foreign language. So, so then, then you have to make choices. Yeah, so but you can't say I want to take four years of language, I want to take four years of band, and I still want to do three other electives. Well, okay, you have to make choices. Well, and it gets, the, having done a number of high school master schedules myself as a guidance person, I can tell you that there's a point where you, you would have kids taking four AP classes, band, and foreign language, and they'd have to pick something. One of the AP classes wouldn't work. You, you just can't, you can't. We, it happens now. It, it, yeah, it's, it just has, it's just impossible it to give them everything that they want. At least when my son was here, yeah. that was an issue. A lot of students yeah. weren't able to do the band because they had to go to SSP during the band practice. I think what Matt is saying is for that small number of students there if they are determined there are options that we can work with them to help them achieve their goals there are and there may be times when they have to choose and they may take the foreign language and not ban which breaks my heart to say you know what i mean if they if they of course. yeah you know I, I i mean i understand and uh, i'm not saying that again we're getting into the nitty-gritty of the mm -hmm. schedule at this point and that really isn't our, that's administration's job to work on the schedule and I want them to do the schedule, but we can give them some guidelines. Yeah. And, and one of the things that just to point out that the, the uh, committee said was it isn't our role to define the bell schedule. We'll right. set the recommendation and then we'll tell the administration you figure it out. Right. right. And this is one of the things we're going to have to figure out is this, this, um, I've seen some creative solutions to these problems and Matt's right that there is a possibility and I want to be clear it's a possibility that someone could theoretically end up having to choose between band and foreign language one year. I think that there's a, a long time between now and September of 22 and then three more years before we get there for us to problem solve that. But I hear you I, I'm agreeing with you. It's I'm worried about it too and we noted that when we had our meeting. And Tom there's some scheduling solutions. There are, yeah. There are. I just don't. I don't want to spend too much time on just the master schedule because that really isn't the point right now. Is to get the recommendations for the big picture, mm -hmm. and then get into the nitty gritty as we start creating schedules and and sharing those schedules with people. Having said that, okay. we do need to talk about the frequency of meeting for math and ELA as part of this process because that is a recommendation that would drive the master schedule. So I'm not trying to shut that down. I want that to be a very robust conversation. It's very important. So just, it's, it's tough because you get into one part of the master schedule, but not the other ones. So I'm trying to keep us in, I don't want us to be here debating things that don't even exist yet. 
Um, what I would like is for the high school administration and my team to develop models for the master schedule and then bring them here for feedback, right? And that would happen in the fall because we're a year away from implementing this change. So it's it's pretty far out. Yeah, we can give you multiple models and you, yeah, you decide on yeah. your way the cost benefit of. And honestly, some of that's good summer work when there's no one here and you can exactly. really focus on the math of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear there's a, an awareness and a commitment to. And I'm really glad that you caught that. Thank you. That came up a lot. Yes, it did. That was a, that was a huge discussion we had. Yeah. yeah. That was not lost in, by anybody yeah. in that. Yeah. yeah, it came up multiple times by multiple yeah. committee members. Yes. Yeah, as a concern. Yeah. And me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all over the band. And yeah, me too. Okay. Um, okay. So regarding, again, the program of studies um, is driven by regulation requirements. So um, if, if you go to the, 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 the next slide, um, with some exceptions. Which number you're on? I'm sorry, we don't want to number five. Danny, if you want to see, I can pull up to Matt or come over here, whatever works for you. Is it, is it okay? Oh, yeah, totally. You're here. Listen, you, you need to be able to see the slides. It's the fifth, fifth slide. I couldn't find you at YouTube. It's fine. <laughs> Happy to help. Yep. So, again, when we looked at our program of studies, many of our classes uh, can be reduced to Half, half year, half credit classes. Um, some cannot, you know, band cannot, choir, chorus cannot, world languages should not be half year. I've worked in schools where that's the case, it's a train wreck because kids forget everything. And right, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. you know, SNHU anatomy and physiology, that's not gonna be a half year, it's a full yeah. year college yeah. course. So, but many of our electives are at other schools around us that I've worked at and that, that uh, other people on the committee looked into are, are half credit. So, you know, even though we've reduced the number of electives, if we transition some of those electives into half credit, the kids will have almost as much choice and opportunity to take electives in the future as they do now. You know, um, because if you think, if, again, we're getting back to those exceptions with the, you know, the band kids, world language kids, um, you know, uh, but there's still a lot of, there'll be an ample opportunity for choice um, for students. Um, but again, that was not the focus of our committee. We just, we, we went through the list, we identified classes that could be half credit, but that wasn't a decision the committee made. That would be something that would be done by administration and team leaders and departments um, in the fall just because they would have to revise those um, courses a bit. You know, if the class is going from a full year to a half year, you might, you obviously have to make some curricular changes. But but what, can I just throw yeah. one thing? One concern that came to me through this process that I love about that, Matt, that I wanted you to hear, is that um, community members and staff members really want kids to have the opportunity to be exposed to multiple opportunities, activities, experiences. And this allows them to have the experiences in a more condensed format, but they still get exposure to different things, which I, yay, right? Like that's the heart level stuff for kids that we don't want to lose. And, and I think it's important when, just so that there's no accusation of a shell game in the future, that when we have half credit classes that I know you're defining it in here as one half year, but I'd like it to have associated with it a number of hours. So in other words, if you take a full year class, it's 160 100, hours. Yeah, 160. Yeah, so like a credit of math might be 160 hours. A half credit might be um, not really 80 because the class might not meet as frequently when we do the master schedule. So we've got to look at, so, so I just want to be clear that in my mind, there has to be an hour attachment to the definition of a half credit for an elective that may not be proportionally 50% of one credit of math or ELA, right? So when we talk about what a credit means, it might be weighted differently in terms of the number of hours for math and ELA than the other courses in our handbook. And I think that the half credit classes may be consistent to half of a history class or half of a science class. It depends on how we can lay out the schedule. So this goal of having ELA and math every day really is a big goal. 
And it's going to drive all the rest of this to fit into the puzzle against that. And I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but can you see how I'm struggling to not, the, the two things meet and I'm, I, I, what I need from the board to move forward is for us as a community to accept the big picture. And then I'm going to dig into the details with the team and we're going to, we're going to start working on models and bring those forward for more detail. Okay. Hey, I can give you some of my perspective on this. When we were looking at this from the electives, three different committees, there was a career committee, a college committee, another school committee. Independently, every committee came up with the uh, suggestion that we go to a half credit. Mm -hmm. One of the big keys was we wanted to preserve to uh, Superintendent Ambrose's statement, we wanted to preserve uh, students' abilities to experience different things. Part of high school is to experience and explore and, and determine what it is that you're interested in. We were determined to make sure that we we're gonna to continue to do that. Uh, when we looked at the graduation requirements, we looked at what other schools were doing. And other schools are primarily at the 24, the state level is 20, we had 28, a few of the others did, but most of the schools had 24. That was reinforced by what the college committee came back and said is that the colleges aren't particularly interested in how many credits you have. They're interested more in the rigor that you're doing in your, in your classes. Uh, and then one of the overriding things that we wanted to address was we are not performing as we have to perform in English and math, and we need to have daily English and math because we're never going to get better at it unless we're doing it on a regular basis. So we said by going to 24, it changes the schedule. We get to focus on English and math. We take into account what the college uh, communities are telling us. We, we focus in, on rigor and performance as opposed to just extra breadth, but we don't take away students' ability to experience different things by giving them half credit options to still be able to taste and flavor different, different programs so they can better determine what it is that they are, are, are aligning themselves to, what, what they're feeling. So it was interesting that this half credit came up in every single committee independently um, and was reported out. And, oh, you said, oh, we said the same. Oh, we said that too. It was exciting when yeah. you heard the other committee say that same thing that you guys had just talked about. It was, it was really nice to know that everybody was kind of on the same page and we all had the same goal in mind. It's, it's giving the kids voice and choice is what we kept saying, you know, and really trying to keep them engaged because when you have year-long classes, if a student thinks it's a class they're really going to be excited about and they're really going to like and they get there and they really don't like it, they're not engaged and they're not really putting as much into the class as they could or getting as much out of the class as they could. But with it being a half-year credit, they can, they can either be like, oh, I really love that, and then they can take maybe a second part to that class or something built on that class. But if they get in it and they just kind of fall in love with it, it may kill that desire to go somewhere else. So, you know, we were really kind of looking at that piece too. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. And it's a long year. It's a very long year. If you decide in November you're, you're, if you're, you're done with like, something, yeah. it's a long way It's away. a very oh, yeah. long, <laughs> it's a very long year. So that was that was another piece that we yeah, were talking about as well. Jamie, your your point <clears throat> was the uh, second bullet on the program of studies recommendation. The post-secondary committee talk to college admissions offices and to, to Mr. Fitzpatrick's point, they want more rigor. They don't yes. want, they don't care if our kids take 32 classes. No. Um, and specifically, as I mentioned, as you see on the PowerPoint, they like more um, lab-based science classes, which we can address in-house. That's mm -hmm. not anything that we need that's, that's that difficult for us to do. We just need to we do, do the work in-house and then more dual enrollment classes, which, yes. which um, Heidi, Heidi Levitt, our director of school counseling can look into. We have a lot of kids who take classes at Northern Essex and SNU class, SNHU classes, so we can certainly expand that. And she's also looking into partnering. Was it Great Bay? Mm -hmm. They're working so. on. I yep. think they're working on Great Bay, partnering with Great Bay as well. Um, and the other thing that I thought was interesting that came out was the AP classes don't have the weight that the dual enrollment classes do yep. when colleges are looking at transcripts. They don't really look at the AP classes as highly as they look at the dual enrollment because the AP classes are high school AP classes. The dual enrollment is a college, college course. course. It's a better predictor of how you are going to do in college. So they weight those more heavily when they look at your transcript. It was also interesting when the, the so uh, I think it was Ms. Levitt uh, had some discussions with some um, admissions folks. And one of the things that they, they were honest with her, they said, we don't credit much to the Sanborn degree because we don't, you don't pass our third party rigor review. Right. 
And because you don't pass our third party rigor review, you often don't make it to the next level in terms of reviewing resumes uh, and transcripts for acceptance. How do we get a copy of that rigor review? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. But, they tried. They could. Yeah. They, but, they tried. There was an interesting and, and eye opening kind of slap in the face right? you know, from admission saying, we, we have certain third party cuts that we do, and you don't make a lot of them because of your rate. Well, that's interesting because that lines right up with the conversation that I had at the PLC meetings today at the high school. So, more to come. Yeah. What colleges did you guys? I know San Anselm's was one. I know she reached out to a few others. I don't know which particular one gave her that insight. I, I, I'd have to look at their file. Yeah. Like, it's, in, it's in here. I could tell you. Late. I don't want to dig through the Google Drive now. But I, I, I can get. I Maybe I've said things. Don't say I said this. So. Yeah, they did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 don't recall. Right. Well, you referred it on your slide to a survey of college and university admissions offices. I, I, unless they spoke under I think they called. I think they called everyone. They called everyone. I would everyone. like to yeah. Yeah. They had to know what you know which colleges yeah. we were talking to. Yeah, each person in the committee had a list of colleges, and they had a list of questions they asked. So it wasn't like a survey that we did with not like with Google careers. Google. Yeah. Uh, it was more of a, you know, verbal survey, you know, about, about these topics. Was yeah. it presented to the colleges as this was confidential? I, I, I don't know. I wasn't committed. I don't, I don't, I don't either. I'd have to ask. If it was not, I would like to see that data, if that's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. That'd be helpful. Okay. I can ask Ms. Levin about that. Okay. Thank you. Um, That's interesting information. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of information. I just it's want the survey so I know what the, the you know what, I want the feedback. Like, yeah. tell us. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so I, I agree, valuable. Tammy, that looking at that information is a good idea. Yeah. You know, like what, if it's not confidential, can we, you know, I just don't want to damage the relationships between our guidance counselors and the people they talk to. So we need to be careful. Mm -hmm. I was surprised you had a third party player involved in this. That was news to me. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't realize that. I'm not surprised. That would be, I mean, that, yeah, it was that would be party, really right? good yeah. to get whatever, whatever that information is. You know, it's sort of like I'll Patty, you were investigating. Well, please, I, I, the, I might find it. I don't know. <laughs> Why am I failing this rigor test? Yeah, just give us. Well, there was. List. I forget the. Uh, again, I'm testing my memory now, but there was like there was like two ratings. It was. There, you know, if we rated it like 50%, we should have been at 70%. And they look at that discrepancy. So whatever this third party was, yeah, it was the two right. scores, and they should line up, and ours were offset by like a 20% discrepancy. Hmm. And again, we can get the, we can find out exactly what that was from that that subcommittee. Uh, it was explained. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember, I remember the double score now that you say but that. But there was yeah. like the scores should line up if everything is, you know. Program everything is working well, but ours were just a little askew. Now I think it was socioeconomic. If yeah. you had a socioeconomic number of X percent, then you you should have had Y percent on on another metric, and yep. we were skewed by something like twenty, and they want yep. those to be at least even, if not skewed the other direction. Yep. If, if my memory serves. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, like I think it was that makes sense to me. It, can you have Heidi come to the next ISA meeting and report out on this? Sure. I'd like her to come here and talk about it. I want to. I have some questions now myself. This is, and it's just helpful. Like if it can help us to make decisions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't surprise me because our free and reduced lunch is around eighteen percent or fifteen percent, and our academic scores are low. That doesn't add up. That means that there's a rigor issue. It means that there's a, a curriculum issue, an instructional issue, really. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it comes down to. Judge her. So, um, okay. Are we on to six? Yeah, moving on to six. Now, six, we don't have a firm recommendation yet. That we just haven't had the opportunity. We have some ideas, but um, you know, the next recommendation that I that I have on the slides is diploma with distinction. And currently, students are diploma with distinction if they achieve thirty-two credits. Um, but you know, how well they did, what they achieved. Is it factored in? It's just did you earn the credits? So 
the committee felt strongly that uh, a student should distinguish themselves from their classmates. If you're going to, if you're going to earn a diploma of distinction, you need to distinguish yourself, right? So um, some of the ideas that um, we tossed around, but again, this has not been uh, looked at in depth by the committee, but we are meeting tomorrow and depending upon what happens tonight and what recommendations uh, you have, uh, we, we can start looking at it tomorrow. First possible um, revision would be to go with a senior capstone project or exhibition, which is in line with um, the graduate success profile that was created right before COVID. So um, I believe one of the recommendations for that profile, mm -hmm. six, five or six mm -hmm. indicated that seniors would do a capstone project. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of meshes in with that nicely. Um, because that was created again uh, right before everything went haywire with COVID. The other idea we had, again, it was just a GPA requirement. You know, would students have to earn a particular GPA to be distinguished um, and, and earn a diploma distinction? Um, but again, we haven't analyzed it. We haven't spent time on it. We haven't researched it in depth yet. Uh, those are just some ideas. But I didn't know if you had any thoughts. Uh, Things we should look at moving forward. Uh, I would like to see uh, uh, an opportunity for the. I, this is just a suggestion again. I, the committee needs to work on it, and I'm sure we'll figure it out. But um, if the rigor of electives or ELOs, if there could be some kind of a. a, a I use the guitar making example over and over again because it helps it to settle in. I did an ELO on how to make a guitar and interviewed three or four guitar builders, <clears throat> read some papers and wrote a nice paper on how people build guitars. That might be like a normal ELO, you know, standard diploma. But if I build a guitar and talk about the science of how the acoustics work, the strings, the mass of the wood, the density, the scale of the guitar, the harmonics, the connection to the science and art, you know, with guitars and present that as my project. And I, that would probably qualify for one ELO for Diploma with Distinction. And I wonder if Diploma with Distinction should also be, um, I, I, I just would like to see a multifaceted way to get to a Diploma with Distinction. I might not be an AP kid who just wants to read and take the tests and, and, and do that kind of work. I would go deep on the guitar thing, right? I, I mean, I would go way deep. I might build a couple the way I am, right? My personality, or I might build a snowboard myself, right? From scratch, build the press. It's a really incredible process for how they build those. It's fascinating. And the, the angles of the width and the bends of the snowboard, you can get into the science like crazy, right? snow density, consistency, water content, it's fascinating. So what, what, what I want to see is that kids who have, have an opportunity for multi modalities to get to a diploma with distinction with a criteria. And I'm not saying none of this is an edict, it's just a thinking, I'm just hypothesizing, but when you have six experiences over your high school career that rise to the level of Diploma with distinction before you get to diploma with distinction. So maybe I take three AP classes, I do two really serious ELOs, and I take one really high end college course elective, and I get my diploma with distinction. What? I'm not saying that's appropriate or fair. That sounds like a lot to me. Uh, uh, for me, I might have, I would probably have gotten a diploma with distinction through music. I took it really seriously. So well, mine might be through performance, yeah. right? Right. My my portfolio at the end of the graduation is. Not only did I build the guitar, but I learned all these pieces and played them and got a scholarship and did all that. That might be how I qualify. And then Don might qualify by taking five AP classes a year for three years. That's fine. It's just not, it's not, I, I just want to make sure it's fair. Yeah, well, well, and what you're saying speaks to the senior capstone. Mm -hmm. if you're yeah. Gonna, if, you're gonna, yeah. if you're gonna take what you've learned and apply it to something you're passionate about, that's a, that's a senior capstone. Yeah. Present it. Yeah. You and know, then, I know other high schools in the state, like South Hagen, their seniors present yep. to a committee yep. uh, at the end of their senior year, or sometime during their senior mm -hmm. spring. Yeah, and I, I want to sit on those committees. I want to see kids. Like, I want kids to be excited about doing more than what's just expected. 
and get rewarded for that. But it doesn't have to be, if you're into cosmetology and you, you do some huge three-year project for that, you can still get a diploma with distinction. But maybe you're just in average classes in school. That's okay with me. Right. It's just making sure that the depth is enough to justify it is all I'm looking for. And I have no idea how to quantify that. I'm, I'm literally just making things up right now. So I, I would love for, I would love to be um, aware of and at least peripherally involved in that conversation because for me that's super exciting, right? That the yeah. kids can, when we were kids, you didn't have options like that. You just kind of went to school, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. And to your point, it shouldn't just be the college bound kids. If a kid wants to take an old 1930s car out of the woods and restore it and go through all that, and you know, yeah, like American Pickers, <laughs> yeah, you know, that could be a project. Yeah, yeah great. Walk okay. us through that. So, so I agree. Agree. my point. I appreciate yeah, that. And it's funny that Tom says that because I was actually, and I won't be able to make tomorrow's meeting, but um, I was going to voice that I thought we should at least consider so that it doesn't seem so out of reach for some students. Make see if there's a possibility of making it distinction for vocation for vocation or distinction for the arts or distinction for oh, academics yeah, and that different. way it really will engage the students you know do you have kids that go to the whole tech that are super passionate mm -hmm. about those careers that they want to they already know where they want to go mm -hmm. you know so if you say you can get one you know if you can get one you do this big capstone project at the end that may give them a little bit more engagement in it. And I think that's really the biggest thing that we're trying to do here is really engage the students. Mm -hmm. I just had an aha that I want to throw out so it doesn't get lost and then we'll, we'll move on. I don't want to, I want, I want to talk about this all night. I love it. <laughs> I know. It, it's so fun. I, I'm so excited right now. Like I've had a great day. It's just been really cool. I've talked to a lot of good people today. And this, this, this idea of like having it be, I, Academically, we need to increase for everyone, regardless of the level of their skill, we need to increase the volume of reading and actual writing and the application of math. I'd love to see us tie the diploma with distinction to reading in the area that the student is in. So, so if I did music, I would have to read 10 books for my diploma with distinction about some part of music and, and have that be a part of my capstone and have writing about that and citing it, citations and like learning how to like write an academic paper, just be a part of the capstone. So in my head, I just keep thinking, how can we as a community get books into kids' hands that are highly engaging and just get them reading and talking about reading and writing about reading? Because the research is incredibly clear that if you read and you write about your reading and talk about it, you get way better academically. And it doesn't have to be that the books are heady books. It's just the volume, the sheer volume of reading will lead to better text. Because you get good at what you do, right? I, I, I camp on what Don said. And maybe there's something we can do along the lines of universities where there's a college of this and a college of that and a college of that. There's a degree of this, a degree of that, a degree of this. And each one has their own degree with distinction for that pillar that these students That's really have. exciting. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Wow. That's good. And again, we, you know, compared to the other, the other things we were tasked with, this, this could be something that can, you know, be dealt with over the summer or into the fall even because it's not as, it doesn't have as many moving parts as like building bell schedules and mm -hmm. program of studies. I mean, this will be the program of studies, but I just, you know, we'll, we'll take it up. But, we may not get fully flushed out by June with two meetings left. No, and, and that's okay fine. because we're looking at a 2022 rollout. Yeah. yeah. So it's, but we can't, what we should do is really set up like a, a very clear backward plan from, from September of 2022 with dis, dis, distinctive steps, real, this one's going to ice on this date and the board, the next date. And then that way we know that the master schedule is going to be on a certain period in the the um, diploma with distinction will be at a certain point, and then it's kind of all now we needed this the bones first before we could backward plan. Well, there was actually some of that going on at the end of the last meeting of whatever we do, it has to be ready for January next year so they can start taking classes. Absolutely, yeah. that is really a deadline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think you have the point. I mean, 
trying to come up with what the diploma with distinction looks like right now, really should probably wait until we have a master schedule so we know what we're really looking at and what we can realistically say this is what we need out of the students mm -hmm. to make that distinction. Um, yeah. So I mean we could start talking about it and come up, you know, spitball, you know, come up with ideas, but I don't think we can really set anything until we have that master schedule set. Well it's really interesting too because people confuse the so I just want to be clear about terms. The bell schedule is the series of events that occur in a day over a period of time, usually a week or six days in a rotation. Sometimes you could do, you can do a two or three day rotation bell schedule. That's one level that can get fleshed out somewhat quickly once we have the parameters. The master schedule, which is the actual um, tying of courses to that bell schedule, won't get done until midsummer of 2022. Because you have to get all the course enrollments, the assignments, the teachers, plan it all out, and then look at it and see what happened. So it, it, it's just, I just want to remind everyone that even with, with all this work, year one, I, I'm hoping that when I get that schedule with the class, you know, with the teacher's names, what they're teaching and when, and how many kids are in their classrooms, that when we get that first one, it will be a lot more balanced than it has been. If it's not, I'm sending the team right back to the drawing board because I can't have one algebra one class with 12 and another one with 26 anymore. That can't keep happening. The teachers, it's not fair to the teachers. Or the kids. Or the kids. All of them. Yeah. But the first go at it might, you know, we'll work hard, but who knows? Because you, you think you got it all lined up and then when you actually plug the people into it and you get into who wants French one and algebra two with geometry or Mm -hmm. Geometry and algebra one at the same time. And... Yeah. Yep. Okay. The second to last recommendation is really a quick one. Um, and the post secondary committee came up with this, and it, it's actually will benefit our students when they apply to college. It's to eliminate class rank from the transcript, the student transcript, but we can still acknowledge the top 10 in the senior class. We can still acknowledge them in the spring of the senior year. And what they found out was that, let's say a student had a bad freshman sophomore year, GPA is low, and their class rank is low. Well, some schools, if you're not in the top whatever percent, 20, 25%, you get thrown out. You don't even get considered. And you may have straight A's for your junior, senior year. You may be an AP class player your senior. They don't even look at it. If you're not in that percentile, you're done. So we're doing our students a disservice, I've been told, I was told, by admission, college admissions people who yep. the post secondary committee interviewed by including the class rank on the transcript because they're not looking at our full kid. They're just like, oh, they're know. just scanning the transcript. They don't even look at you. Yeah. Oh, you and we're number 76. Oh, we yeah. only take out to 75. Because you think about it, like the, the, the school my daughter's going to, they, they, they had 75,000 applicants for 3,500 spots in the fall. So they, they're, they're, they're just, they're, any way they can get rid of applicants, they do. So, so I, I was opposed to this and until they, they started drilling into it and, and what kind of sold me to support it was, all right, if you're number 10 and, and, and your GPA is 4.121, and your number 11 and your 4.120, there is zero statistical difference in your yep. grades, but number 11 doesn't even get considered. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was just overall, um, you know, the cum laude, summa cum laude, uh, and cum laude type situation, then you don't necessarily throw, throw the baby out of the bathwater when you're trying to make your, your segregation. And some schools don't list class rank on their transcripts, so they're getting looked at and we're not. That's what I understood because I really hesitated about mm -hmm. this. I didn't yes. know that. The only thing that I have to question there is if it's if it's really that important to a school, if your class rank is so important that they're, it seems to me that they would, that the fact that it's not on there at all would not be an advantage. I don't know. I, again, I guess I mean, that doesn't. I don't we could ask Heidi that question next to me. Yeah, like a little more for yeah. me. Yeah, I get it, Heidi, because yeah. that was Maybe sort of. Yeah. I think I think what they recommended to her was just to not put it on at all. Yeah, it would it worked out better. For I mean, it's it, it's what you're saying is you know kind of makes sense, except 
I mean, if yeah. I'm really just going to throw you out because you're yeah. a 75 or 11 instead of 10, they're going to want to know, <laughs> are you 11 or 10? I mean, they're going to want to well, Or they're just using that as a pre screen. I think what happened to you is it's a pre screening tool. So if it exists yeah. on the transcript, they're using it. And if it doesn't, they just put it into the next pile and go forward. I asked the same question that you are, and we can have Heidi come and talk about it. But I felt the same way Jamie did. I'm like, what? Wait a minute. They had to really slow down and explain this to me too. And I came around to it, but it didn't. I asked the same questions is all I'm saying to you. And we can have Heidi come and talk about it. Okay. I mean, obviously we want our students to not be disadvantaged. Yeah. So if that's truly, I just, I don't understand how. I guess I don't I don't understand why a college wouldn't seek that information out if, it, if it's really I don't think they get that active. I yeah, let's talk to Heidi, but I think what Jamie was saying, tell me if I'm wrong, Jamie, but I when they told me this, I'm like, Jamie's never gonna go for this. Oh I did. I yeah. argue against yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Can I have me tell stuff? Yeah, yeah. I thought the same thing. But the the, the, the the way I understood it, and maybe I've misinterpreted, but I don't think the way I understood it was basically if you're putting that in there you've ranked your students and if you rank these as the ones we should look at those are the ones that we're looking at right. if you did then our job we have to spend some time on it yeah. as opposed to yes. if you did then like i'll just <laughs> use what you did and i'll get rid of like, some paper on my uh, desk the most shocking thing for me when i was I, I met with harvard's admission team when i was a guidance counselor and i asked them so what what gets a student into harvard I, now i've had two very close friends go to harvard one was my private music student and the other one was a classmate in my grade at Stearns in Millinocky. And the woman it was so funny because the woman said to me, we have thousands of applicants with exactly the same SAT scores, class rank, and, and transcript. The reason why they choose people is because they're creating a cohort of students. And if you have a skill that they need to fix the cohort, they'll take you. Guy from Millinocket, fantastic jazz pianist. They had an opening in the jazz band. They took him. Right. The other kid, bass player. Fantastic scientist. His dad was a, a science instructor at USM. And he built a laser for his eighth grade science project. Right? And he was from European descent. Uvenge. Great kid. So, so he had a cultural piece that he could bring. And he had an academic piece. And he had a skill set of playing the bass. It really boils down to what they need and whether or not you have what they need that year. Yes. They both got incredibly lucky. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get maybe we can have Heidi add that to her yep. discussion next time. But okay. So the, the last recommendation on slide eight, and this um, comes from the Career and Workforce Committee. And while we currently give a uh, quarter of a credit per year for advisory or one credit, you know, there's not a lot of, the expectations are loose. Okay. And really this is not only tightening up those expectations, but more importantly, really aligning those with our career and college readiness, making sure, and, and make sure our kids uh, gain experiences that will help prepare them for the workforce, for college, life in general. So, um, also, I would say, uh, so So part of that is we would like to make advisory, as you saw in the first slide, that recommendation, a graduation requirement. Students have to earn credit in advisory to graduate. Um, Mrs. Alley, Carrie Alley, our career pathways coordinator, who's fantastic. She's been recognized multiple times in the state for the work she does with internships, ELOs. She came up with this badging system that I shared with you. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to click on it for a second just so I can look at it. And as you can see from the description at the top, uh, there are different sort of levels of experiences that get more rigorous, more challenging, more involved as you go from left to right, and then down from freshman year down to senior year. And um, as it says in the description, Kids would be expected, it's like a menu choice to do at least two, gain, um, complete at least two experiences per level, gray, blue, and gold, each year in order to earn the credit. And again, you may not have had time to look through them, but you know, some of them might be as simple as filling out a job application, which our kids 
some kids struggle with, mm -hmm. uh, to you know doing a job shadow your senior year and interviewing a professional in industry. So and writing up a reflection on that. So there, there's a lot of choices here. Uh, it's not this is very much a draft, um, but um, you know this is Ali spent a fair amount of time on it. The other aspect of this that is key is you'll see at the top it cites SB 276. That's a new law that was passed that requires, and I look at my notes here, um, it's really the state trying to ensure that we have kids prepared for our workforce. You know, because right now too many kids leave high school and they're not ready to enter the workforce. They, whether it be, you know, their ability to collaborate, communicate with others, or just being, you know, taking initiative. Right, they they struggle with some of those things. So um, that law, which is being revised now, will include a career interest survey that's required by all high school students. That's in here as one of the experiences. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hear that. Another one, she said, is a push for um, sixty-five twenty-five, which is she she said. Um, a minimum of 65% of your high school seniors will have had to have obtained an industry credential. So like right now we have kids who are getting OSHA certified in school or different certifications that, that they're gonna need in the workforce, but the state's gonna require this of us. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like she's getting out ahead of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually, this is called a recommendation, but we're gonna pilot in the fall. We already have advisory. You don't need to approve advisory. We have it. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start piloting this in the fall, um, just to see how it goes. Um, but I, again, it's I've been in schools with advisory, and too often it's like a glorified homeroom, mm -hmm. and this is fantastic. Um, you know, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, start of my conversation. Uh, uh, sorry, at the start of the presentation today, I mentioned that we had done a survey um, and, um, and Mrs. Dutton was on, it was on this, this committee and we had a 10 question survey that uh, focused on work study practices, things like communication, collaboration, uh, creativity, student self-direction. We sent that out, Mrs. Alley has um, a whole list of them. She sent it out, got at least feedback from every industry around and um, you know, we could share that data with you if, if you'd like, but, um, you know, while many of our kids can enter the workforce, a lot of our kids are lacking in just basic skills that any productive, competent employee needs. That's, that's just sad that we're sending kids out, out of high school to diploma and they, they can't enter the workforce. So um, I think, these, these changes will help address that, but you can speak to it. Yourself. I was just going to say that some of the comments that really stood out to me, um, it wasn't necessarily how the pie chart looked, it was the comments that they put in. Um, some of the comments that really stuck out were, you know, the student was a great employee after I spent a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they took, they had to take their time and train them and, and Get them to communicate or get them to ask for help or you know it, it was they're great employees but they needed that training you know um so that was kind of the thing that stuck with me the most was so i was i, I put some value on the pie charts but i put more value in the words that they added in the comments they added in um and that for me was a big one um that i noticed and to talk about the credentialing um so there is a program that Carrie had, uh, has found that it's not super expensive, mm -hmm. um, but what we can do is if we get this program, we can actually use it, we believe, 7 through 12. And at the end of, say, a computer course or if there's a, somebody doing like an engineering class or something like that, they can actually go into this credentialing system, take the test at the end of their class, and get a credential in that. Yep. And take that, and that can then go on their resume. 
Those are things that may help them stand out when colleges are reviewing them. And it also goes to the credentialing that's going to be required by the state. Yep. Um, so it's kind of a twofold there. It may help on both, you know, meeting the high school and also, you know, when it comes to college um, transcripts. Um, and then the other thing with this whole badging system, um, part of the reason for really kind of putting in different levels was because we had in mind the diploma with distinction. So if you really are looking for that diploma with distinction, you go above and beyond the gray level. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was that was that's why we kind of built it the way we built it. Oh, cool. so uh, I mean, or I should say, wait, Carrie. I mean, she she's all over this because this is all stuff that she's just kind of she's right. also been working on. She's yeah, living this. Yeah. yeah, she does. Yeah. She knows these laws that are coming into play and all of this. So it was great, but then by putting it into this different like, okay, well, what makes sense for a minimum requirement? What is like, you know, middle of the road and what really goes above and beyond that would maybe set you up for that distinction? Mm -hmm. um, so we also wanted to take advisory and really make it so that you could take and add that to your advisory period if you really wanted to. Um, again, that engagement piece, you can be, I have to be here, so I'm gonna do it or you can really truly be engaged in it and really try to drive your, your future and your goals, you know, through this here. Um, so that was kind of- And you'll also sort of see thing. some just life skills yes. integrated. Like, yeah, that was so you see, too. you know, yeah. creating like a cutting board and wood shop. Yes. That's not like something a kid can do by taking one of our wood shop classes. This would be extra. So they'd have to go down during, like you couldn't take a class to fulfill this requirement. You'd have to like go down during FLT and Mr. You know, um, McDonough or someone would have to you know, help you during FLT or during advisory and then gain those skills outside of an academic class. So you couldn't check these boxes by meeting in an academic class um, or you know, basic auto repair, changing a tire, stuff like that. It, you wouldn't be able to take the automotive class. You'd have to, you know, we have to have time set up in our FLTs mm -hmm. for that, you know, whatever. Every right. Tuesday in November, you know, you can go, you know, uh, to the auto shop or to sign up for the auto shop to, to gain this experience and then earn this, this badge. So uh, there's, there's other things integrated into there. And again, it's, it's not fully flushed out yet, but, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's definitely a, a step in the right direction by all long shot and uh, having been at schools with suspect advisories this is pretty exciting for me because this is you can make advisory meaningful and mm -hmm. address yeah. uh, address a deficiency that unfortunately a lot of students in the state and country have by the high school is there is there any room in that and, you know, just just for consideration for the future for um integrating some of stephen covey's have seven habits of highly effective people into that advisory program I, I don't know. I just think that, that there's a great, there's a teens version. There's actually a curriculum. Could you look into that and just, yeah. just see if, I, I mean, it used to be that Stephen Covey's seven habits were kind of game changing, but now they're kind of just expected for entry. I mean, Jamie, feel free to chime in, but I mean, those, those seven habits are pretty, pretty important things to function in the world today. He wrote it in the nineties before the internet, you know? So but that book was written, he studied hundreds and hundreds of success literature works over hundreds of years, I think he did 250, and took the seven core habits out of all the different areas. Do you have any? Yeah, I mean, that would be, we would be fine. And in the work world, what we see coming into the work world after college is um, interesting to use that kind of word. Uh, you have people that cannot look another person in the eye and, and engage in a conversation because they, they want to do this and, and and you have to you have to interact with people outside of your phone yeah um yeah and you, you just basic basic things asking somebody for assistance um that life isn't about a checkbox well did you get that for me well no i sent an email yeah and well they didn't respond but I, I need you to get this for me. It's their fault. No, you were responsible for it. I gave you the task. You mm -hmm. should have got they on to talk to them. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You just been having teenage trauma. I've got a 16 year old and that's what it's like. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, but if he's like that at the end of college, we're going to have a problem. Right. So when you get into the work world, you know, that 
that sends signals so right true. away to your bosses and other people that you 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 know you've got employability problems. So the, the seven habits there's there's a lot of different ways to get at it. But yeah. it it's good. It it needs to be addressed. Really, we have we have to do a better job recognizing that technology is not just enabling; it's disabling. And 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 in the end. Everything boils down to human relationships, and, and you got to be able to, to interact with human beings. Mm. And I'm going to be a terrible person because that's a good thing, and you want to see this video. But I really would love to see us tighten up our cell phone policy, really enforce it mm -hmm. because that is a critical piece to our student success. Yep, they yep. are so dependent on that phone in front of them. Yes, I understand having a Chromebook, you need that. But to talk to somebody, you have to actually do it face to face, and well, those are skills that are lacking right now. And look at the eye. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so here's another avenue to get at that. If you force them to write and do peer revision, yeah. they have to talk. Yeah. So that's one of the strategies for teachers' colleges. You, yeah. you, you, you write yeah. about something that's important to you in a genre. Yeah. So the, the could be biology. Maybe you'd write about I don't know diseases. I'd write about. I don't know, uh, frogs, doesn't matter. I like frogs, he likes diseases. We write our paper and our thing and they and raise up the frogs. Yeah, they figure out how to affect <laughs> the frogs. But, but, but you read my paper and you give me feedback and I have to talk to you with a piece of paper in front of me, not a computer. And that's, that's where that piece about like, I, I'm a parent too, I'm in this with you. Sometimes I switch hats quickly and that really pulled me into that parent hat, Jamie. And I, at the heart level, what I see for my children's ability to literally write with a pen is my own fault, but it's hard because they type like crazy. My little seventh grader wrote an essay the other day. It was awesome how he wants to have a job to help his community and he wants to contribute to society. And uh, it was awesome, but it was all typed. Did you get into whatever we're looking for? No, no, no. Actually, this is, I'll tell you later, but it's not about me, but it was a good, yeah, yeah he does do that. Um, but no, he, uh, um, he is, it, it's just the, the, the communication piece is really concerning the body language, the vibes, for a lack of a better term, the vibes. So what, um, what, what do we need for today? What, what decision well, are you guys looking for? Anything? Or just well, we want to move this to the board and get it approved. When you say this, Unless, are you talking recommendation I mean, number one? Because not all of these are, are you know fleshed out here. Definitely number one. Is, we're meeting tomorrow, so we can flush things out tomorrow. So if there's, I know there was some questions about. I mean, do we want to? Are we going to put aside the possible concerns about those kiddos who? may take four years of band and four years of world language. Well, I think what Tammy was saying, and I, I would agree with her completely, yeah. we, we have to really get clear about between now and September of 2022, what we're going to do with that problem. And we need to really think about it and be mindful of it, but I don't think that it should slow down. My, my opinion and what I, what I would ask from the committee is that you um, move to the board slide number one, which is to move to 24 credits. Mm -hmm. um, with this recommendation, with an understanding that um, we need to figure out and problem solve with the master schedule concerns that arise, such as students who want to take band and four years of Spanish both, right? That we know that, that those kinds of things are on our radar. And then in terms of these other recommendations, I mean, the, the, I think the board should adopt the half credit, let the, give them permission. I mean, I, I think everything in here is fine to bring the diploma with distinction isn't ready for the board yet. But, but I think that we could say this is the framework. Yeah. And, right. and, and, and this is the path that we're going with unless the board directs us otherwise. Right. And then and we I could have that discussion. Now, the true. first two slides are what we need to go forward for a framework. Right. The diploma with distinction, the transcript piece, that can get dealt with next fall. It's not like we're going to change our transcripts this week. Right. right. But we've got a board meeting in a couple of weeks, and I'd like to get them focused on working on that master schedule over the summer, the bell schedule, and then concurrently working on the program of studies for next year, because Jamie's right, kids have to choose classes in January. And I know it seems like a long time, but when you look at like the start of the first three weeks of school are crazy, 
then we get into budget, mm -hmm. then it's November and you have 15 school days, and then it's December and there's 15 school days, and then we're in January. Yep. We need to, I want to hustle. I want to get this done. Like, I, I'm so, like, amped up after getting out of this COVID stuff. I, I'm just, yeah. I feel like a, a marathon runner who's got his feet glued to the ground right now, right? I just got so much I want to do for the kids. I want to move. So I think we're all, Matt, I think you must agree that we're, we all, when I met with, I met with all the high school PLCs today, they are all ready to talk about things. They want to move forward. They want to make changes. They, 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 of course, like with anything, they're nervous about things, you know, like one of the PE teachers was super nervous about making certain things a half credit or, or what's going to happen to physical education. And those are great questions, but we can't iron those out until the framework's done. Um, and speaking of physical education, one thing we did kind of throw out there as a possibility of something to look into to free up a credit for some students that may need it was possibly um, athletics outside, mm -hmm. you know, if you yeah. do a sport outside, you know, a, a sport for Sandmore, you could use that potentially as a physical education credit. I think there would have to be criteria that would have to be met um, to fulfill that. Um, but I guess if and that correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe some other schools do actually do that. Is that what I heard in the meeting? Yes. I, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. so uh, that would be a way to free up a one of the requests because there's five and a half credits of electives, but then there's also PE, which is another credit that's mm -hmm. required. Mm -hmm. So there's a way to kind of free up to give you six and a half credits if we looked at that as an option. And maybe that's not an option for every student. Maybe it's like you need to apply for this. Mm -hmm. And you need to get approval. Well, it could um, be it could be the third alternative if you have a student that's taking really rigorous courses and band and right. and uh, right. or years of a foreign language, you can apply for this this exemption for a, a credit of visit. So Mrs. Harvey went through the actual. She brought up the um, the rubric for visit, and she said, "Yeah, we need the rubric." Yeah. So the. We did push that. That was actually one of the things that I wanted to bring up too. Okay. Is, uh, we, of we should look at that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 if, if kids are actually doing training physical sports outside, that's a heck of a lot more phys ed than they get in a phys ed class. So those people that are choosing to do it, that's fine. Oh, and it might entice other people to join sports. And joining sports is a pretty good thing for kids in terms of teamwork, collaboration, respect for others. Uh, getting off your butt and away from a screen. I mean, there's, there's a lot of benefits a lot of to outside us too. Of the school hour, just continuing to yeah. yeah. So I, I like that. The other thing, I'm glad you just made those comments. You're rare to go. We need to get things done because another thing that came out in the data sets here is this move to competency-based education. Mm -hmm. We have seen the two lowest schools in the data sets that we looked at was 21 New Hampshire schools. The two lowest schools got rid of letter grades and numeric grades and they went to competency like we did mm -hmm. we were second to the last mm -hmm. raymond was the last yep there was only one that was not in the bottom that was competency based and that was an epping and epping is massively degrading theirs as we speak they've already laid out the degradation of it so they started with proficiency at 3.0 you know kind of grade and then they said well, we're going to create basic proficiency next year. We're going to call basic proficiency 2.5. And then next year after that, we're going to call basic proficiency 2.0. And then we're going to have basic proficiency plus, and then we're going to have proficient. Well, when I was hired, we had basic proficient was 1.5, and I moved it to 2 immediately. Yeah. So what, what, I just, what sorry, I kind of unilaterally did that, but it had to happen. So one, one, of the things, parent, I that. Yeah. One, one of the things that, that in my mind, anyways, Grades are a communication tool to parents. Mm -hmm. And if we want parents involved, and everything says parental involvement is key. <coughs> if we want parents involved, they have to understand what it is that we're telling them as to what's going on with their kids. Parents don't know what's going on with our grading system. Some of our teachers don't know what's going on with our grading Absolutely. system. <coughs> students don't know it. I, mean, I have students come to me and, 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 and neighbors, et cetera, and say, yeah, we're, we're told there is no E. We don't, we don't teach to E's in our course. That P is the same as an A. Uh, comments like this. If we go with numeric, a translatable into a letter, that helps parents get involved. They know a D is not good and they have to do right. something. Right. They know a B, if they've, got a, if they've got a child that's always excelled and they're coming home with B's, they know task A. 
why aren't you getting A's anymore? What, what's going on? I can start seeing a, de a degradation that, that is meaningful to me to engage as a parent. And I, I think, in my opinion, it's time that we address this as an yeah. uh, organization. So you, one of your questions on page nine is, what's the feedback? This came up in the committee meeting. I brought it up because I was one of the ones that had the data sets. Um, but that wasn't part of the charter, so right. I, I didn't want to, yeah. to try and inject that into the middle of it and, 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 and take us away from what was very collaborative and good work. But now I got my eyes up for it hat on, and I think we need to do this as a board. I think we need to be looking at it. We just brought in Alma. Uh, I, I, I think parents would be uh, very uh, embracing of it, and I think students would too, because students don't know, they, they don't know what these things are. So I spent all day talking about that with teachers. And I think that teachers are ready to have the conversation. And, and what I would suggest is that we develop, I, I, there are a number of things. That, so when I was meeting with the teachers today, what I asked them about is the strategic plan. I have a meeting on Monday to meet with the high school administration to discuss the grading and grading questions that come up from the teachers today. And what I'm going to do is recommend that there's a, a, a either the committee that already exists with the 17 people just keeps going because once you're formed, it's kind of nice. I'm kind of wondering if you should join one of the subgroups and just be a part of this. Because it seems kind of, I, I don't know why not, right? There's three groups, there's three members of ISA. Why can't you all be on a group? But I don't know what your schedule is or whether or not it would work for you. But I, I just think that let's just engage. Like let's talk to people. Let's let's meet and begin this process of having a conversation about what the future of grading at Sanborn is going to look like. I'm down for just going for it. I am too. Right, I, so I'm ready to do something. Yeah, yeah no, I, well, I knew you were gonna, I know, yeah, I could have predicted that, but open the door, he not just walks in, he runs in yeah, yeah. a dump truck. Yeah, but we can't go to the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's talk about this. So I, this is, this sounds like, certainly it's not a discussion. It sounds like we might want to discuss this at, as a goal for the for our board. We have to have that discussion mm -hmm. of what our, our, our board goals are going to be. And yep. That usually drives our discussion mm -hmm. here of what yep. our goals are that we work on. So that, I mean, I was actually going to mention that at the meeting that we should probably put that on the agenda mm -hmm. pretty soon. Mm -hmm. yes. In June, um, yep, we will. So yeah, I think we should definitely, um, I'm not even in favor of having that discussion, mm -hmm. um, but I think it should be in conjunction with a, a larger Either we bring it to the board and just you know recommend it as a goal or whatever, but um, so we can add that to our agenda next time or whatever. We can talk about that. No, I think um, that'd be good to add it to our agenda next time. See, so we can't go to the board for the board if we haven't already had that. Our, our next meeting is June 20, June sixteenth. Yep. So oh, it is. It's not June second. Mm -hmm. well, oh, 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 I said. Oh, I'm sorry. I got my. I was thinking policy. about the board. I was still. Yeah. Um, so we do need to have we do need to have a discussion. We always have a discussion of what our goals are going to be yeah. for the coming year, um, and that's that yeah, works for me. But usually they're, they're driven by, or you know, so we have I'm not yeah. chicken and egg conversation there. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think we've kind of outlined some things that we should keep track of, though, Tammy. One is the grading, having a conversation about grading, which lines up with the policies committees need mm -hmm. to do the I policies. Yep. Yeah. So if we come up with the recommendation, then we can rewrite the policy, which is way out of back. So just for the record, the I policy on grading is actually not congruent with our practices. Blake right. never changed it. So okay. let's okay. fix it. Okay. So it's time to fix it. Yeah. And then and then the I other one. I don't want to get congruent with the current ones. Let's yeah, let, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's just let's have the conversation the and come up with something that'll work. Right. The, the other one is uh um uh uh thinking about the and this these don't have to be the goals, but I'm just throwing them out because they're kind of on the forefront, is having a conversation not just about our grading system, but about um, uh, the, the process of getting to a master schedule that for the high school level that meets all of our competing stuff, right? So we've got, we want math every day. We want the, everything we talked about earlier and that isn't really something that the committee would necessarily do, but the, the administration will work with the committee for input. I think that this high school steering committee should run for another year. That's my opinion, is that the group is doing incredible work. And before we- what we're gonna call it now? I don't know, what is it called right now? Graduation requirements and schedule committee. You can keep it that, but we could add a Make it a longer name. I don't know, we'll talk about the name. If we're going to do that, here would be my suggestion. 
you bring the current committee to a definitive end. You restart a committee and you invite a Fremont player into the committee at a starting committee. Because when we talked to them about this committee, they said, well, you already started. Just I know, and I was frustrated and, by that because we had only had one meeting. I know, but this would take this would take that off the plate. And there may be people, if we're not focusing on, like if our focus changes, they may not be as yep, correct, invested. Correct. Yep. So we probably should restart. Yep, I think that's great. And yeah, there's, so we'll talk about that at the next meeting as an agenda item is goals slash the, the bigger committee. And Tammy, if you want to consider joining one of the, the triad, right? Because they've got a, they've got three subcommittees within the committee. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be great to have a board member on each one. And I think post secondary is the one that we don't have, right? Oh, not post secondary. No. Right. So I think right. post secondary is where we on there. I think what are the details of the, the when, well, if we when start, start committee start, when do something different? What's the story there? Well, when do we meet? Is that, yeah, if I were to join one of these committees, what's the, you know, what, what would I be committed? When do you meet? Because I have a full-time job. Yeah, right, right. So, so our formal meeting is like the third Thursday of the month from 3.30 to 4.30. And it's been on Zoom because... Which actually is nice because we can get people from the road from you know they're just they're popping on from wherever they are yeah so you like tomorrow tomorrow we're meeting for out. instance i think it's tomorrow and then june 17th and we're done because you know the teachers they had like a little bit like a contract like you're going to do next yeah. number of meetings for june 17th so um yes we have two meetings left yep 3 30 to 4 30. can't do tomorrow so okay. i'm still traveling that's fine. It's just, just a thought, Tammy. You know, I mean, I, it, you know, it would kind of be up my alley a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Secondary, but um, if you, we can, we're running out of time, so yes. yeah, and yeah, Dan's got to come in and grab his. Oh, okay. So we, yeah, we need a motion so, for the yeah. for adopting um, recommendation slides. Uh, a slide four and five. I make a motion that we, we we adopt the committee's framework with an immediate focus on on slides four and five uh, to the set the administration working on those two critical aspects of the framework. And we'll bring that to the board for a full vote to change the graduation requirements. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Second. Cool. I'm going to have to look through this again to get that. <laughs> Motion. I got to adopt the framework, and then with specific focus on the 24 uh, credit graduation requirement and half credit electives. Okay. Uh, for immediate review, to go towards implementation of the administration. Okay. Um, I guess I need discussion. I hope we pretty much have it. Yeah, we can have 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 it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. And Great work, Mr. Malila. Thank, thank you so for all your hard work. The committee was fantastic. Everybody, I, thanks. Everybody I was not joking when I was a little nervous when it started. I know. They were great. Everybody was awesome. But you've done a really good job. Thank you. We don't have public comments on our committee or on our agenda. The foundations are available for as an yeah, we have to wait for Tammy to adjourn us. I wanted to ask I, I'm not going to talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, I certainly mentioned Carrie. Yeah. You, you want to make a public make comment? Um, well, I had I had two. One was one was that there are many um, accreditations that are available through SNHU, so that might be able to be incorporated, like yeah. in Google and things like that. Um, oh, and the second one is that one of the house bills that is coming forward on education is for every high school graduate to have to pass a civics test mm -hmm. to that would be comparable to becoming a citizen. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that that's incorporated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's really good. Yeah. I think he sponsored it, but that's just <laughs> <laughs> <I'll teach. laughs> good to know. All right. Okay. Oh. All right. So we're adjourned.